Welcome in to a special edition of the Atlanta Basketball Party. I don't know if you all noticed, but the NBA draft is upon us. We've got a couple of days, so we're going to get into a nice big preview. I am your host, Jarvis Davis. I got my main man, Atlanta Hawks postcast co-host, Deshaun Tate, the main man himself, the basketball guru. We're going to get into it for you. We've got a couple of things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what the Hawks are actually going to do with the first overall pick. And then we're going to slide into Quinn Snyder and whether or not this is going to be his pick. Is he, is this the, the person that they pick? Is Quinn Snyder's name going to be all over that bad? But, but first, we got to let you know that you are listening to the Atlanta Basketball Party. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Deshaun, one of the things that has been truly fascinating is watching and going through all of the, the rumors and the whole Alex Sar, He played it overtime elite, so he got a little taste of Atlanta. Apparently, he doesn't want to be here professionally, and he doesn't want to play the five, and we've just been hearing all type of rumors, man. But at the end of the day, on Wednesday night, when the draft and the, comes around and the Hawks are on the clock, what is the name? that you feel is going to be called and does that line up with where you feel like the Hawks should go with the number one overall pick Jarvis I think what we ultimately are going to hear what we should hear right okay is this is typically the way that it goes dun, 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 dun. the Atlanta Hawks decide to move the number one pick oh gosh in exchange for you fill in the blank right here. That is the very best case scenario. Now I caught a lot of, I caught a little bit of slack and just walk with me for a second. Cause you know, I get long winded. My apologies in advance. It's all good. I caught some slack for, and I still haven't moved off the, 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 the fence on this as unrealistic as a lot of this is going to sound. And I do understand how unrealistic it is. If Deshaun Tate is the general manager of the Atlanta Hawks, the very first thing I said that I will do is I am going to pick up the phone, call LeBron himself, okay, and allow him to tell me no when I ask him how serious you are about playing with your kid. We're not making this out to be about Bronny James. We are not having a conversation about taking Bronny James number one, assuming that his dad is not coming with him. So let me just be clear on that part, as if I needed to say that. I guess for some people you do. Um, that per se, and I won't go all into detail, but that per se is not a player that you're ever going to see of that stature in an Atlanta Hawks uniform and having a chance at it ever again. So that's just what I'm doing. By the way, for the people that's giving a little bit of pushback on that, just an FYI, if you can tell me, there, Jarvis, on, 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 on Wednesday, we'll hear, what, 30 names. On Thursday, we'll hear 30 names. You, listener, whomever you are that is listening and watching in on this post, on this, po on this podcast, if you can guarantee me, a, take whomever the number one guy is whose name is going to be called your pick if he and put him in his prime in an Atlanta Hawks uniform in his prime now can you guarantee me that that particular guy is going to give me at least half of what LeBron can give me at age 40 right now then that's a whole different conversation we're having if not I think the easy choice is LeBron now to make things a little bit more realistic Deshaun Tate would take the number one pick maybe DeJounte Murray in that conversation and the guy that you went and picked up and moved up for at number four in a draft in 2019, who has not played 67 games in a season being Deandre Hunter. I packaged them up and I go and get probably the only guy in the NBA who I think can play with Trey young. And his name is Kevin Durant. That's what Deshaun Tate is doing. I got to get okay. something out of nothing. Could we be having a conversation about Brandon Ingram? Could we be having a conversation about Paul George? Don't know, don't care. I don't trust that not only any of these guys in this particular draft, by the way, and again, forgive me for getting long-winded, Jarvis, but I want to break these this down to the people. 
not only do I not trust who the number one guy is in this draft, whomever he is, I don't trust that the Hawks will make the right pick knowing who the guy is. By the way, we don't know who the guy is. So I think there's a couple different onions to the layers to this onion. We're going to hear a lot of more rumors in between now and then. I don't feel comfortable in making the pick. If you ask me who's the number one guy and you had to make a pick, I don't feel comfortable in making the pick. I'm sorry because I don't know who the guy is, and I don't trust that they're going to make the right decision. Wow. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot to unpack right there. I'm but... sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize, but I had to get some stuff off my chest. It's been a little while. <sighs> But I, I mean, I'm with you when, when you talk about not trusting them to make the right pick, because we've talked about it on Atlanta Sports Party, whatever party you talk about when we you watching. If you listen to Locked On Sports Atlanta, you understand that I don't trust Landry Fields. I don't. I don't trust him at all. And because one, he he's inexperienced you know, in being a general manager and, and two. I don't think he's really running this team. I like mm -hmm. anytime somebody comes, has to come out and say or be asked, "Are you? Do you have the final to say?" That's in, enough in making the pick and making the decisions with this team. You don't. <laughs> if you have to answer that question, that means you don't. In my eyes, like I just that's how I just view this whole thing. But I, I think that you know this draft is interesting from the standpoint of you. you I feel like you have to look at look at it from the perspective of I have to find someone that can pair with Trey Young, right? That that would be a nice match with, with Trey Young. Not necessarily saying, hey, he's going to be part of the big two or big three or whatever you want to call it. And I think that, you know, we're kind of moving away from that, from that, that, that team building style. Right. But mm -hmm. I think overall you have to look at somebody that, that can pair easily with, you know, or Trey. With that being said, I feel like Alex Saar would be a, ideally, you know, just from measurables, what he can do well in his rookie season. I feel like defensively, he might be able to give you a lot more um, than what Clint Capella can give you at this point in his career. So I feel like, you know, having that pick and roll piece can, can really help this team uh, go a long way. And right now and in, and towards into the future, but I, I feel like, man, to be honest with you, I really feel like the the Hawks are in a space now where just given the rumors we've been hearing about Alex Sar and how he doesn't want to play with the Hawks because he wants to play the four spot, and we understand what Jalen Johnson brings to the table if he's healthy, that's probably pretty much going to be his position. You know, uh, going forward, just from just from a floor stretching standpoint, and just being able to you know get as much as many threes up as as Quinn Snyder wants him to get up. So, the more and more I think about it, I feel like Zachary Risache is going to be the going to be the pick, and I feel like Quinn Snyder is going to have his hands all over that one, man. Yeah, I um. Number one, as far as SAR to the Wizards or whatever, what have you, some of the rumors that have recently come out. From my understanding is that it's not as much about not wanting to be a Hawk as much as it is about that he wants to be a Wizard. And again, for whatever reasons that that may be, I just don't want whatever to mislead the people. But, but, but the reality awful, is that the way that that looks, no matter how you shape it, mold it, mm -hmm. form it, whatever, that means not in an Atlanta Hawks uniform at the end of the day, no sure. matter how you look at that. Slice it and dice it however you want. Um, I think what's going to happen, and it's not just about the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, first of all, I think we all have a pr pretty clear understanding with the Atlanta Hawks, with this being a particular draft, that in an average draft year, whoever is picked number one is probably going to be picked number 10 in any other draft if it wasn't this year. Whomever ends up getting the guy that comes out of this draft that mysteriously and nobody knows who in the hell this, this person is, they're probably going to end up getting the right guy on accident. He's just, they're just going to get lucky and happen to just say, we got to pick the guy, whoever's best player available. And we're going to go with him, whoever that guy is, you know, enter your name, insert your name here guy. Um, and they're going to get lucky on accident. We hope that that's the Atlanta Hawks. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the Atlanta Hawks would get the number one pick in a draft like this, to be honest with you. But um, they've, they've got some things going for them. Unfortunately, the talent pool in the draft is not necessarily one of those things. Um, and that's why I said that I would move it just because I don't know. We've seen how this looked before. We've, I mean, there's, I mean, if we just being honest, spade a spade, keeping it a buck is what they call it in 2024, the cool kids. We just saw one of the guys that is linked to the guy to the other guy that we have just coming off of an NBA finals appearance. I'm not even sure that they made the right selection there. And most people feel like they know that they didn't make the right decision there. Regardless of all of that, I'm a, I've, I've been running this draft stuff for a while, Jarvis. I like to think of myself sometimes as a draft expert. And I know a lot of people will probably disagree, but I have been the most uncertain about who is the best guy in this particular draft. And we're hearing so many different names. We're hearing Rissa We we're hearing, uh, 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 um, um, Donovan Klingen from UConn multiple times. Um, we're hearing uh, 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 Alexander Saar. I don't think we're hearing very many more names outside of that. Right, um, yeah. But it's a crapshoot, and that's just the reality of it. I, I don't know that big difference. What are your thoughts on Klingen? Chance. What are your thoughts on Klingen? Klingen definitely benefited from having a nucleus around him. He showcased some things that you can't take away from him. But there are some instances where there were some big games that he didn't show well. I think it was against San Diego State, eight points, eight rebounds, something up in that range. San Diego State being a team that is very undersized or fairly undersized, I should say, where he mm -hmm. didn't necessarily stick out like a sore thumb, but he benefited from the talent around him. And that's what's making him out to be such a question mark sometimes nobody's doubting the size i mean heck think about it yes he's a winner he's a two-time you know national champion he's only been in the in college basketball only played for two years but when he played in that national championship game against zach Eady, it was very very clear as to who the guy was and obviously nobody's talking about taking zach Eady number one unless we are I'm not sure that we haven't even got to that point yet, but we're going to hear so right. many rumors, drivers, between now and then. I know it sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I like Klingon, but I'm not in love with Klingon. I have a really good feeling that this is either going to be fool's gold for all the potential that we thought that he would come out with at UConn, or this is going to be a time where it's like he didn't have a chance to showcase what he could really do. This is why he should have been taken number one. Maybe a Brad Miller-ish type of comparison, style of play, not mm -hmm. how good he will be. I just want to make that clear. So, you know, with Klingon, Zachary Richarche, Alex Saar, out of those guys, and given, like, you watched all the games, mm -hmm. all 82 mm -hmm. with the Hawks this year, and mm -hmm. you kind of got a good grasp of what Quinn Snyder you know, uh, wants to do, wants to accomplish on a nightly basis in the NBA. Out of those three, who do you feel if their name is called and you say, you know what? Quinn Snyder has something to do with that. Wh which, which one of those three would it be? Um, I think he's going to have something to do with whoever is being picked number one. Now, let, me, sure. let me just say that first and foremost. Um. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but I think it'll be, I think it would be Sar. I think okay. it would be Sar. Um, my concern with that is, yes, he will be, uh, I, I would imagine that he will be asked in terms of the pick being made. But the concern that I have is what feels like the blind is leading the blind with this franchise. They're running on a wet, uh, on a wreck, on a wreck wheel and keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Now, the last time I checked, that's the definition of insanity. Sure. But um, there was an old saying that my grandmother used to use. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. You got to make, you got to do something different. You got to do something 
um, big here. And that's why I said that you should move the pick. Now, as far as making the selection, and this this goes back to, you know, how much emphasis he has on uh, the selection being made. I think it's too many hands in the pot. I have another analogy that I necessarily can't use here. I don't want to offend nobody, but I think that it's, it, there's too many hands in the pot and decision making. You got Landry Fields, you got uh, 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 Quinn Snyder, you got Tony Wrestler. I don't know what part Tony Wrestler's wife plays. You got Tony Wrestler's son. Yeah. Trey, I'm sure, has some say so. Grant Hill, Kyle Corver, this one, that one. It doesn't feel clear cut to me. As mm -hmm. to, I'm the decision maker. This one is on me. I know what they say, and I know what sounds good, but just like you alluded to earlier, when you have to be asked, and that's going to be a big question that's going to be asked as to whose decision was it, I just don't feel good because I don't feel like there's a, a, a leader in the front office, per se, um, and I don't feel good at all from a vocal an emotional uh, leadership standpoint in that locker room either, if I'm just being honest. Yeah, man. I I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm smelling what you're putting down because like I, said, I don't, I don't trust, trust the brass because of all the names you just mentioned. Like who had, who, who knows who has all to say so, but I, I feel like I like what Quinn Snyder is putting down. I mean, there's obviously some, some things that I don't necessarily agree with from a philosophy standpoint about putting up threes and, you know, if they don't fall in, then what, you know, they just yeah. keep shooting, <laughs> you yeah. know, you know, you know, the Boston Celtics almost shot themselves out of, out of a, a, a world championship because of mm -hmm. that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. taking all these difficult shots and, and everything like that. So I, I'd be interested to see how it all goes down on Wednesday. We'll have you, we'll be right there with you. As soon as the Hawks make the pick, man, Deshaun and myself, we will be going live right after the Hawks make the pick. So you can imagine what the response will be. So I, I, we, we hope that you guys will be there, right there with us um, as we get ready to get, get this thing popping off. And uh, we want to thank you for listening to the Atlanta Basketball Party right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. We're free and available wherever you download your podcast. And wherever you download your podcast, make sure you leave us a five-star review. Really appreciate that from you in advance. It is. My name is Jarvis Davis. He is Deshaun Tate. And we'll see you Wednesday night right after the Hawks pick.